Welcome students. My name is Matthew Wynn. I am a graduate teaching assistant at the Florida Atlantic University campus here in Boca. Now, I'm going to be your instructor for this Intro to Excel course. We're going to be doing a two-week prep course to ensure that you have all the tools you need in Excel to be successful in your courses at Florida Atlantic University. Thank you guys for having me. It's going to be my pleasure to be able to show you guys such a great and powerful tool. So the way that this course is going to work is that we will have 10 lectures that we will focus on different components of Excel, starting from the basics. If you've never opened an Excel workbook before, we're going to go from beginner to intermediate and then get into some advanced topics. So I hope you guys enjoy these videos and let's get started. If you have any questions during this two week prep course, feel free to email me at Matthew N G U Y E no N 2023 at FAU.edu. I'll be around to assist you with any of the exercises, any of the quizzes assigned, and also if you have any other questions in Excel that you would like to know. This is the Executive Education Excel 101 Part 1 presentation. This is going to be an introduction to Excel. Our first part of this three-part series for Intro to Excel. We're going to be going over a lot of different topics uh, related to functions, formulas, and even some of the basics like the ribbon and the different parts of Excel that you can explore as a Excel user. Who am I? Like I said, I'm Matthew Wynn, a teaching assistant at Florida Atlantic University. And this specific video will be about 25 minutes long. Picture that any of the each individual of the 10 modules or 10 sessions will be about 20 to 30 minutes long. Pause. I want to take a poll. That way we can collect some data to see how spread out the knowledge in Excel is. So feel free to click this link that I'll attach to the meeting notes or the video notes or feel free to click on your camera button and scan this QR code. If you are an expert in Excel and want to help teach feel free to reach out to me and maybe we can put something together. All jokes aside, let's get started. I wanted to put up a quick meme about Excel and how it might fit into some people's resume when really they don't know much about Excel. But after these modules, you'll become an expert in Excel as long as you put the practice and the time into it. It's simple enough to where you'll be able to do a great job at combining these skills and these related topics to further your career and further your knowledge in Excel. So about me, I'm gonna run through this quickly because we're here to learn about Excel. I am a financial analyst. I work in financial services for five plus years now. I worked for an insurance company as a financial analyst. Now I am working more as a data analyst, but also doing some financial metrics. I studied accounting at University of Florida. Currently a TA for the Florida Atlantic University executive education classes, where I TA for a financial modeling course, as well as an accounting course. But I also run boot camps for Excel, financial modeling, Python, on and other related business analytics, finance, and accounting skills. I'm pursuing my CPA and my master's. I hope to pursue my PhD at some time in the future. So a long road ahead of me, I'm always learning. I love Excel. I use it pretty much every single day, and it is something that brings me a lot of joy. That's me and my girlfriend at my first marathon. Okay, so about Excel. Have you ever thought about the origins of Excel? If you're watching this video, I would think that no one has, but I wanted to run through this and I think it'll be really important to understand how powerful the tool has become and take away some of the common misconceptions about Excel. So Dan Bricklin and Bob Frankson created VisiCalc in 1978 to help solve business related problems. Uh, they, this is the first uh, ever spreadsheet application that was ever created and it helped solve some really cool and interesting different issues in their time. You know, it seems like a long time ago, but not too long ago. These are the guys and later another Excel like program came out called Multiplan and Lotus. Uh, those are two different ones. They added some features such as charts that was not embedded in the original VisiCalc of 1978. Now in 1985, Microsoft decided to create Excel. And now that's what we know as of Excel. The history of spreadsheets dates back all the way to VisiCalc, but nowadays the main and pretty much one of the only business analytic tool that most professionals will use 
will be Microsoft Excel to some extent. There are some different types of Excel spinoffs like Google Sheets uh, and alike. This is what Excel looked like in 1985. It, is, it was very basic and it allowed for people to do some computations, but has come a long way. In 1993, Excel came out with VBA and macros and made some really big updates. And some of those updates we still see to uh, today. 2023, Excel has numerous capabilities and has changed tremendously. So on the agenda for today, we're gonna be learning about the Excel interface and its key components. We're gonna be creating, opening, and saving workbooks down to our computer. We're gonna be doing some basic data entry and basic formatting. We're gonna introduce everybody to formulas. We're gonna introduce everybody to some functions. And we're gonna be doing some absolute and relative cell references. Now, if this sounds like Chinese to you, don't worry. It'll sound very, very familiar and you'll get it really quickly, I promise. All right, so in Excel, what can you do? In Excel, you can perform something as simple as making a personal budget. Now, when I first started using Excel, probably at the age of 13 or 14, I was granted the access to a course which taught me how to use Excel. And one of the very first things we did was create a personal budget. At the time, I did not have a job, nor did I have any expenses. So it didn't really make much sense, but it definitely helped build the foundation of my Excel skills today. Something like this would look like a personal budget, really cool user experience and user interface looks nice, right? Now you can also build full scale financial applications in Excel. This might sound scary, but not too scary. You can also build cool dashboards like this and other data analysis tools that allows upper management and others who don't know how to use Excel to, to see your analysis of data and get an over visualized view of the data you're presenting. Any role in business analytics, finance, accounting, and related fields will likely use Excel. All right, so this course is gonna be hands-on. We're gonna be focusing mostly on doing different projects within Excel and using some different data sources that I'll provide for the class to do these exercises. Now I'm using Windows. Most people that do Excel on a day-to-day -day basis will use Windows. Mac is a little bit behind in some of the cool features that Excel has, but don't feel like neglected. Mac also has some very powerful capabilities in Excel and will work for 99% of users on their first go around. If you have any questions on any of these hands-on exercises, please email me at this email here and feel free to reach out to me at any point during your career at Florida Atlantic University. I'm always happy to help and I'm always around to teach individuals these topics. Now let's look at the Excel interface and its key components. So we have the ribbon, we have the quick access toolbar, we have the formula bar, we have worksheet tabs, we have columns, rows, and cells. And this is what a overview understanding of what that is. Now we're gonna jump into a workbook so this makes a little bit more sense. But remember, Excel is based on columns and rows and that gives us a cell. A nice little diagram and illustration here. But let's jump into the program so it makes a little bit more sense. So let's look at the Excel ribbon. The Excel ribbon is this top bar up here that allows you to go from different items that you would find in Excel. Normally by default, you'll start in the home tab, but let's go over to the file tab to take a look at the different options in this tab. So in the file tab, you'll find a bunch of different options and a dashboard that will give you some recommended Excel files that you'll have. It'll give you some blank and also some templates to start from. You can click into more templates to look at something that you're trying to do. Let's say we're looking to do a general ledger with a personal budget. We can use this template to have a starting point. Now on the left hand side, you'll see a bunch of different options. We'll run through these quickly because they're pretty intuitive. So on the first, we have the open workbook where you'll be able to open a variety of different workbooks from different locations and different areas on your computer or on a OneDrive account. Next, we have the info. Here's some information about your specific workbook, such as the size, the dates related to when you created it, the author, the modifier, and some other options. 
Next, we have the Save as a Copy tab. This tab allows us to save this workbook as a copy. Next, we have the Print tab that allows us to print specific parts of our workbook as we would like to see fit. Next, we have the Share tab will pull us out and it'll allow us to share this workbook with others in our organization and alike. You can also click here, which is a little bit easier and more intuitive that allows you to share. Next, we're gonna go to the Export tab that allows us to export our Excel file as a PDF or a different file type and alike. Next, we have the Publish tab. This will be publishing it to something like Power BI that allows us to visualize our data in a different program, but we'll skip over this for now. Next, we have the Close tab, which will close our entire workbook. So let's go down to the account tab. The account tab will give you information about your user, some different product information here, anything about updates, you can see what's new, you can look at the different versions of Excel. Next, you have the feedback tab where you can actually give feedback to Microsoft. I've done this a couple times but never really received a response. Next, we have the options tab which brings us to a modal pop-out that allows us to make some different changes within our Excel uh, application that allows us to do some more complex and advanced things. Next, I want to talk about the quick access toolbar. You can come up here and you can customize your quick access toolbar. Now, in this instance, I have a couple things that are listed at the top that allows me to do some quick clicking, but let's say I want to allow myself to email specific workbooks quick and easy, I can add this email icon that'll allow me to email this Excel sheet to different users at different points in my process. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this from my quick access toolbar because I don't like to send many emails. All jokes aside, that's the quick access toolbar. Very useful for some repeated functions such as adding your email or maybe you wanna be able to sort things from highest to lowest and that's a quick and easy fix for you and you can just click this button and that'll do that for you as well. I'll leave this up here for now, but feel free to mess around with the different things you can add in the quick access toolbar or again, go to file, go to options, and then you can actually customize your quick access toolbar up here as well as, long, as, well as customize your ribbon. So now that we've knocked out the first part of the ribbon and the quick access toolbar, let's get to the remaining portions of the ribbon in Excel. In the default tab, we have the home tab. The home tab has a bunch of different options that allows us to do stuff to, to our data, as such as formatting, such as changing specific types of filters. So let's go to the insert tab where we're able to insert some different types of data visualization tools alongside pivot tables, slicers, or comments for our workbook. Next, we have the page layout tab. This allows us to customize how our page will look if we decide to print the Excel sheet. Also, we're able to add things like grid lines to our sheet. We're also able to take those away so they disappear and other things like bringing elements forward and selecting them and sending them behind. The next tab, we have the formulas tab. The most important part of this tab is a, being able to insert functions if this is how you like to insert functions. However, we'll get into using the formula bar at the top here where my mouse is because I feel like this is the best way to insert formulas. Now let's look at the rest of this. You have some function libraries here, which allows you to look at the different functions that Excel has that's native to your Excel workbook, such as these different types of functions related to these different types of topics. You're also able to do some things like tracing your formulas, error checking, and also some other calculation tools. Next is going to be a very important tab, the data tab. You can do a lot of stuff in the data tab, very powerful and allows you to utilize different components of an Excel workbook to become an expert in Excel. Such things as getting data from different sources, sorting and filtering data a little bit more specifically, um, text to columns, uh, data validation, what if analysis, and a lot of other different advanced topics. Next, we'll go to the review tab. The review tab allows you to look at different history in your workbook, such as looking at comments. It allows you to protect workbooks, and we'll get into why this is important later on in this course, alongside some other different cool variations of Excel.
Next, we're able to go over to the View tab. In the View tab, we're able to further look at some different options that allows us to, for example, freeze the top row. Let's say I want to freeze this top row. We can go to Freeze Panes. We can go to Freeze Top Row, and I'll able to keep this row frozen. I'm going to take this out now because I don't need this. We're also able to look at the page layout and look at some custom views. Again, another area where we can change the view of our Excel workbook and do some different things. Next is going to be the Automate tab. This might not come na natively on your Excel. Um, this is a, a little bit more of an advanced portion of the Excel environment where we're able to do things such as recording new scripts and automate some tasks. Next, we're gonna get into the developer tab. And again, this tab might not be native to your Excel, but I'll show you guys in later videos how to add the developer tab where we're able to look at some different options here like running macros, using Visual Basic, which is a coding language that allows us to write different lines of code to manipulate data in Excel and also do some repetitive tasks. Next, we have the Help tab. If you need some help, you can contact support. You can give feedback like in the File tab. You can go at to Show Training. This might be helpful for people that want to look a little bit more into the Microsoft training from Excel. Next, there's a Community tab where you can actually send messages to people in a expert community of Excel. We have an Excel blog, and that's about it for this tab. Later in this course, we'll go over briefly Power Pivot and how you can use the data model to do different things in Excel that you will find extremely useful later on in your Excel journey. So let's get started with the cells. That is the basis of Excel. So as you look at this cell, this is a cell, this is also a cell, and this is also a cell. Each of these different boxes are considered cells inside of Excel. And the top portion of Excel, you see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, all the way down to 16,000 columns. So you can imagine the different types of combinations of letters you'll get. And then as you go down the rows, you'll have numbers. So remember, all a cell is is a concatenation of a letter or mix of letters and a number. Okay guys, so we're back in the PowerPoint presentation. Let's do a quick overview. Again, a letter is the column and a number is going to be the row. So a letter can be a combination of any letters from A to XFD, 16,384 columns in Excel, and a number can be anything from one to 1,048,576. Heads up, anything over a couple hundred thousand rows, your Excel sheet might get a little bit slow. So again, a row and a column equals a cell. And look, FAU 2023 exists as a cell. And here it is. Okay guys, so creating, opening, and saving workbooks. Let's create a new workbook, let's open an existing workbook, let's save a workbook, and let's talk about some naming conventions for a workbook that I like to use and feel free to use something of your own. So let's go over to Excel. Okay, we're back in Excel. Let's say we wanna create a new workbook. Like I said, you can go to File, and from here, you can go to New, and from here, you can open a blank workbook. So let's open this blank workbook, and now we have something called Book Number One. So from here, in order to save this workbook, let's click that top button where it says Book One in Excel, and let's save it as our Excel workbook. Now we can choose a location, OneDrive folder in the documents portion. You can also save it onto your different folders and you can click down and go to more locations and you can actually save it to your PC. Let's actually save it to our PC in this case, just so we can have it a little bit easily accessible. So let's click save. Now, in order to find this on your PC, what you want to do is you want to go to your desktop. So we're here in my desktop now. Let's say we want to find that Excel sheet that we just downloaded. I'm going to go over to my file uh, tab here, and I'm going to open this up. And as you can see, it's right here in our Documents tab. Uh, we can also scroll down and look at our OneDrive. So we can look at our OneDrive, what's saved to the cloud. Uh, and we have our documents here because our OneDrive is synced up. Now, if we want to open this workbook, let's just click on this. And our workbook will now open up on our desktop. 
So this is our workbook that we just opened up. And again, if you want to rename this workbook something differently, we can come up here and click the file name. I like to save my workbooks with some naming conventions. In this case, let's say this is our test Excel file. So the file name, let's do where this file is coming from. This file is going to be used for FAU. And let's put the date, uh, the month, and the year. So 06-2023. Click enter. Now our file is saved as something different. I'm going to hop back into the slide deck. Let's go over some of the questions that I have for everybody. So feel free to just answer these on your own or stay tuned for my responses. So what tab can you use to change the font? We know that you can change the font in the home tab of Excel. Where are the pivot tables located? The pivot tables are located in the insert tab. Now, trick question, what is the keyboard shortcut to save a workbook? If you don't know the answer, the answer is control S. We did not go over this, but I'll be attaching below a list of Excel keyboard shortcuts to help saving, opening, and also doing some different functions like copying and pasting values in a separate file. There are so many Excel keyboard shortcuts that it would take me an entire class to go over all of them. But I'll attach that below so you can know a little bit more about those cool features. This will be the end to part number one of the Intro to Excel module. Stay tuned for part number two in that video.